Hi, this is Craig Stocks here at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. And today I want to talk through how you can create your own version of this uh, SHO narrowband image of the Pac-Man Nebula and color map it in Photoshop. So this is a tutorial or video that you can follow along. Uh, let me hop back over to the website and if you go to blog and to the color map your own Pac-Man Nebula in SHO, so this is the blog entry, and you'll see here are the four images that we'll use. Uh, there's three monochrome narrowband images that were captured through the specific uh, colored glass filters that pick up the specific gases. So the first one is the S2, which is sulfur, uh, HA is hydrogen, and then O3 is oxygen, and then the fourth image is the stars. Now these have already been processed through PixInsight, stars have been removed, uh, and I've done some cleanup to make this easy because what I really want to focus on is the color mapping technique using what I think of as kind of the universal and probably the easiest color mapping technique. Uh, in order for you to get the uh, images to work with, it's uh, very easy. Just click on each one and then you can right click and choose Save Image As and do that for each one of those four images to save those to your downloads file. Once you've done that, then you can hop into Photoshop. Now if you don't use Photoshop, if you use Affinity or one of the other programs, it probably has similar functionality, uh, but we're going to do this in Photoshop. So let me just close this sample and we'll start from scratch. So what we want to do, we'll start by opening all of those images and we want each one of those images to be a layer in one Photoshop file. So to do that, we'll go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack, and this is a standard part of uh, Photoshop and then we just browse to go find those four files that we just downloaded and they should be in your downloads folder and sure enough there they are click OK and we're done adding files to this list so we can click OK again and you'll see that each one of those files gets opened in the uh, layers palette and I like to have my workspace organized like this it's based on what would be considered the Essentials workspace, um, which you can find from the, uh, the drop down up here that gives you the different workspaces. And I have it organized so that I have the Layers palette at the bottom right. In the middle, I have the Adjustments palette because this makes it real easy to choose individual adjustment layers. And then at the top is the Properties panel and it will show the properties of whatever layer is selected down here. Now each one of these is an individual layer and I like to have my work organized so I'm going to organize these into layer groups. And to do that I'll select each layer and then uh, that'll be uh, Control G on a PC or Command G on a Mac will drop that layer into a folder and I'll just double click on the folder name and change this to stars and then I can expand or hide the contents of each folder with this little drop down caret so I'll close that up and then in fact I'll turn it off and we'll just do that to each one of these layer groups so I'll choose oxygen control G double click on the layer group name change it to oxygen and then close, turn it off. Same thing with hydrogen. And close it, turn it off, and then the last will be sulfur. And you'll probably notice the sulfur data, this was captured under a full moon, uh, so it's not a lot of data to start with, and um, it was stretched pretty hard. So it's, it doesn't look real clean when you look at just the sulfur by itself. Uh, but once it gets put into a colored image, it looks fine. So now we have each one of these dropped into a layer group. 
<clears throat> the next thing we want to do is change the blending mode. And I want to change the blending mode of the layer group, not the individual layer. And to do that, you just select the, you can select the individual layer. And the default for a layer group is pass through blending mode. If I open that drop down, there's a whole lot of different blending modes that we can use. And the blending mode is how Photoshop combines this layer or this layer group with whatever is visible below. And for each one of these, we want to put it in the screen blending mode. So again, I'll turn the stars off. We'll go to oxygen, put it in screen blending mode. Hydrogen, we'll put it in screen blending mode. And lastly, we'll put our sulfur in screen blending mode. Now, since sulfur is on the bottom, it really doesn't matter what blending mode it's in, but uh, just to be consistent, we'll use sulfur for, or I'm sorry, screen for all of them. Now it's time to add color and finish the image. Uh, I do want to change the order of things a little bit. The stars layer group always should be on top. I like to put sulfur, then oxygen, then hydrogen. So I'm going to change the order here so the layer groups have sulfur on the bottom, oxygen in the middle, then hydrogen on top. It really doesn't matter what order those three narrow band groups are in, uh, but if you're consistent that way, it just makes it easier to, to jump back and forth between them because you, you kind of intuitively know which one's in the middle, which one's on the bottom, and which one's on top. So to add color, we're going to open up the sulfur group, and then I'll click on the layer that's in that layer group, and I want to add an adjustment layer. And the adjustment layer I'm going to add is a hue saturation adjustment layer. And it has a specific mode that we're going to use called colorize, and that's a checkbox right here. And you can see why I have the properties panel and the adjustments panel readily available. So for each one of these, I'll click on Colorize. And then I'm going to drag the brightness down to about 20, 25% of the way up. Drag Saturation all the way to the right. And for an SHO image, we want Sulfur to be red. So the SHO is in the sequence of red, green, blue. Sulfur is, in fact, the most red of these three elements. So we want to color map it to red. Now we'll go to Oxygen, and we're going to do more or less the same thing. We're going to click on the Oxygen layer. We're going to add a Hue Saturation Adjustment layer. Click on Colorize. Drag the lightness down. Saturation up. And in terms of color mapping, the Oxygen, in, in real life, it's kind of a blue-green color. Uh, in SHO, we usually color map that as blue. So I'm just going to drag this hue slider over to blue. And now we have red from sulfur, blue from oxygen. And we'll do the same thing with hydrogen. Click on the hydrogen layer, add a hue saturation, click colorize, right lightness down, saturation up. SHO means that H is going to be green. In reality, that means it's somewhere between red and blue and the exact color you define, you define by where this slider goes. And you can do this very interactively just by watching the image. And hydrogen, to me, winds up being kind of the, the color balance tool. So you can move it back and forth until you find a color balance that, that you feel suits the image best. Sometimes it's more towards green. Sometimes it's more towards yellow or orange. Uh, but I'm going to say that looks pretty good. Uh, now, I did include some text on each one of these, and notice that the text, in fact, takes on the color of that layer. So you can tell immediately that sulfur is red, hydrogen is green, oxygen is blue. Now, if we want to do some global adjustments to these, uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to go ahead and collapse each one of the layers. We can put global adjustments between the hydrogen layer and the stars layer. And one that we might use, for instance, is a levels adjustment layer. And what it would let us do is use these sliders, for instance, to darken the darks or brighten the, the bright areas. Uh, darkening the darks and brightening the, the lights basically 
creates contrast, and contrast makes the image more dramatic. Uh, we might also want to change the overall color balance. We can do that with the color balance adjustment layer. And here we can play with the individual colors of red, green, and blue to uh, fine tune the overall color balance. Uh, we might want to adjust saturation, and to do that we would use a hue saturation, and this time just using it in its normal mode, where sliding the saturation to the right increases saturation, or to the left decreases and gives it more of a pastel color. But this is art, you're the artist, so whatever looks good to you is the way you want to approach it. And you may find over time that your, your taste changes, uh, as you become more experienced and are exposed to more images. So you may want to come back and change this sometime in the future. And so to keep this document completely pliable so that you can change it anytime, you want to save it with all of these layers and layer groups intact. That way you could come back later today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, and change any one of these sliders to change the, the overall color of the image. The last thing we'll do is turn the stars on, and that adds the stars back to the image. And there we have a more or less finished uh, Pac-Man in the SHO color palette. And it's just that easy of putting each one of these layer groups in the screen blending mode, <clears throat> and then using a hue saturation adjustment layer to add the color. And then you can fine tune not only the individual color that that individual element is adding. Uh, you can also change the lightness if you want to give it more or less prominence. So I hope you have a chance to download these images and play with it in Photoshop or whatever photo editing tool you use. Uh, if you do, be sure to share your results. I'd love to see them. And if you have any questions, you can drop those in the comments below. And as always, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks.